about it because going to planning if the stories aren't ready, it's going to take a lot longer than it needs to. And by being committed, taking ownership and being responsible for your project gives the excellence. So this is being the best that you can be and this is continually improving. So when you have your retrospectives, if you have them, how can I be a little bit better? What can we try differently? What might work? So this was the first thing that the, the Brailsburg looked at. The second one is marginal gains. Does anyone know what these three pictures have in common? So I was quite impressed when I did my research for this because we went through a lot of effort uh, to research what a cyclist does pretty much day to day when they are spending a lot of it cycling. You basically walk through their day, daily life noting every single thing that they did. Could I optimise that just by 1%? One of the most, well, most interesting to me, as the Tour de France people are spending six hours on a bike, every night they are in a different hotel, different bed, so he got each athlete made their own mattress, their own pillows, their own sheets, and these got driven from hotel to hotel for them. Because if they were getting a better night's sleep, that 1% was worth it. He looked at the helmets. How can I make them more aerodynamic? How can I make them so they're faster? And he kept going for different versions of it, experimenting, testing them out, did any of them make a difference, until he found the one where he was getting the most time saving. And then the lovely leg warmers, they're actually heated. So it's using the same technology as Formula One's does for keeping their tyres warm. But he found that that had a really interesting effect on the athlete's muscles, it caused them to cramp less. So again, it's a little bit of a same thing. So when you're looking at your project team, what are they doing every day? Where is their waste? Where are those 1% savings that we can look at and actually improve? So maybe you have a lot of meetings. We have a lot of meetings. So let's standardise the format. Let's have a set agenda. Let's have minutes sent out. Let's have an outcome that we want to achieve by the end of it. So when we go in there, we know what we're talking about. And if all meetings have a very similar set format to it, they're going to be a little bit quicker and a little bit less painful. You can save a little bit of time, which means the project team can be doing what they want to be doing. They can be coding. They can be getting on with delivering the project rather than spending time. We're trying to implement a slightly new way of working or slightly different software. We run a training course on that before the project starts. And it's another way if the team don't really know each other that well. It's a good way of bonding as well because you're all trying to solve the same problem. It's all new to you and you're talking about it. And could you do that problem? We're always a bit stuck on that. And it's, it helps communication as well. Working <coughs> So there are actually two thoughts on this. Um, where we work is open plan. We move desks very regularly depending on the project you're on. You sit within your project team. We have windows that we abuse quite a lot with post-it notes. Uh, and the white sticky paper that you can write all over. Your office is not your product. Utilise the space, make things visible, be able to put stuff up so people can easily see it, that they don't need to log into SharePoint to find this document and probably not be able to find it for hours. Utilise it. Though what I did find interesting is on my last project, <coughs> we occupied three different bays. Bay one and two talked. Bay two and three taught. Bay one and three, not so great. Because you had to walk. And it was amazing that people would wait till there was a meeting before asking a question rather than 
standing up. You could even stand up and shout. But standing up and walking over to ask the question. So we found smaller teams pretty much correlating as closely as possible is the most efficient for us. Again, actually, if you can get a project room, that's even better because then you've got all four walls that you can use to your heart's content. Pairing. Anyone in here pairs? Do you enjoy pairing? <laughs> so, it depends if you're a consultancy company or if you're in-house. Consultancy, it is a little bit harder sort of to sell the idea of two people doing one person's work. I know it's not that case, but a lot of people push back on that. But actually, you might have one person writing, you have someone looking over their shoulder, you have two people discussing the ideas. You're probably writing less code, better code, and you're automatically getting knowledge transfer. So if that person's off sick, you've still got someone who knows how to do this. So there are a lot of benefits to pairing. I personally, when I've worked in different teams, developers actually seemed a little bit happier that paired, but that's my impression. Mobbing. Now this is quite interesting to find a picture on Google. Google mobbing and you will not find this. Um, so, if you listen to the Unruly talk, uh, I think it's next, they do a lot of what they call mobbing. So this is more than two people around the computer. So you've probably got a difficult problem, or you want to do some knowledge transfer. Let's get the team together to talk about it, come up with a solution. So one of the pieces of work we've been working on recently um, is a mathematical engine trying to work out the best ways of paying people and paying <coughs> debts first. It was not simple. As a business manager, it took a long time to get my head around it, um, to code it. Good luck to them. Um, but we had a team of five people sitting around one computer testing things out, trying out different bits of code, trying to see if they could replicate the old model. And I think this probably was the quickest way of doing it. Because if we'd given it to a, one person or even a pair, it was extremely hard work. And actually, it was really useful to have those conversations. And I was sitting opposite them, so I could overhear all the conversations, input when they had questions. It's a great way to work and make sure that everyone has the same understanding of what they're delivering. Everyone in your team has a voice. They should use it. Everyone has great ideas. So this is why on our board we have an ideas area. So you never know when you're going to have a moment and a great idea will come to you. Stick it on the board. We can walk past it, read it, talk about it the next stand up, uh, bring it into the retro. But you are part of a team. You can influence the direction. So why would you not speak up? And the other thing we do, this is a little bit silly, but it's really quite interesting data you can get off of this. We'd have this on our stand-up board in the morning time, people come up, and they just put like a dot where they were today. Everyone has bad days. Fridays we get a lot more fours. <coughs> Mondays we get a lot of ones. But what's really interesting, if your whole team is at one and twos, for a prolonged period of time, you'll get a massive drop in productivity. If your team is at one and two for a prolonged period of time, why aren't you addressing it? Because that's not just a bad day. There is definitely something fundamental going on. So it's a really nice way of being able to work out where your team's at, how motivated they're feeling. Is there something underlying that that there's a slight problem that they don't quite want to vocalise yet. Is there a way of being able to get it noticed before it's too late? <coughs> and it's been used quite successfully. So we're you know, trying to get certain things in place. People aren't really sure. There's a lot of email conversations. It wasn't quite going how we wanted it to go. 
We have about four days of people one and two. You know, let's have a look, let's have half hour catch up. You know, what's going on? What's what's working well? What's not working too well? And we could address it before I think it got too bad. And also, if you get a lot of people one and twos, how much do they want to be in your product team at that time? So it's a very good way to try and work out why they're not being motivated. Can you help before it's too late? Before they decide that they want to move on elsewhere? Team building. I keep suggesting this to the guys. For some reason, they're not really up for it. I know it's really cool. Um, if you're working in a team of people and you don't know each other that well, it's quite hard to trust them straight away. They've got ideas, but you've not worked with them before. And it takes a bit of time to understand how people work, everyone is different. So, this could be as simple as a lunch. Go out for drinks after work. Uh, one of my guys, um, who works in a different company, they had a group yoga class. And actually, everyone loved it. They were quite cynical to begin with. Um, but it's trying to get people out of their natural environment and actually learn about who they are. We could also address this in the retro. Um, some of the games sort of write three things. One of them is a line. You have to guess which one's a line. So you learn two things about the person you probably don't know before. It's really useful to know your team because they are the ones who are there for you. They're the ones who will be helping deliver the project. So utilize time. So Jared Weinberg proposed this sort of rule of waste. If I work on one project, it has 100% of my time. If I work on two projects, each project only gets 40% of my time, and I lose 20% context switching. If I work on three projects, those projects only get 20% of my time. I am wasting 40% context switching. This does depend what role you're on. But if you're a developer, BA, I mean, I've been on two projects recently and I probably was not a great BA on either of them because you're constantly trying to remember the details for each of them. It is very hard to keep changing your mindset so, who actually works on more than one project? Do you feel you're efficient? Don't worry, your boss is out in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's been recorded, maybe you don't want to know. Um, so try and, if it is affecting you, talk to people. Can you only work on one project? You know, you want to be the best you can be. So make it easier for yourself. Take away that issue. Dave, very nicely, covered this one this morning. Uh, thinking fast and thinking slow. So it's your system one, your system two. So everyone at Dave's this morning? So basically, your fast thinking, three times three. You automatically know it. Scarily enough, driving falls into this category. Apart from when you hit traffic, then you go into your slow thinking, which is quite good. The other interesting thing is, if you are really into the detail, doing your slow thinking, really analysing the problem, your willpower just disappears. So as long as it's cake in front of you, you will just eat it. Because it's very, you're using a lot of energy. So, if you are constantly context switching, you will never go into slow. Because your mind's always jumping around. And you have limited time per day to use this. And we're quite lazy, we tend not to want to go into the slow thinking side. If you are 100% on one project, you are more likely to achieve that and think a bit more, come up with different ideas, potentially out of the box. So this is our waste snake. Um, you might be on one project, but you might be doing a lot of other things. So we have this per sprint. Anytime someone's doing something not on the project, we just stick a post-it note up on it. Who is it? What are we doing? How long do we spend? At the end of our sprint, this comes into our retro and we go, actually, we spent this amount of time not on the project. Why? Can we reduce it? Can we optimize it? This is part of our 1% of marginal gains. Let's capture that information. Actually, let's 
make it visible to people what we're doing and what we're not doing. Because if we've got tight deadline and we're not hitting it, but yet people are pulling us in all sorts of directions, we've got the data to show why we aren't on time, why we aren't on track. So I say, focus on one thing. I also think innovation is a great idea. Spending 20% of your time, and this could be innovating about your project, or innovating not about your project, but it's a motivator, and it gives you energy, and it gives you time to really explore. And it gives people a bit more excitement about the project, because they've got something else to focus on as well. Google bring in a lot of people innovate. Anyone have innovation at work, innovation time? Do you actually do you actually get time to use it? Yes, we have process in place. Really, yeah. make sure it really. Because a lot of people go, oh yeah, we can put a date for that, and it gets pushed back and pushed back. Bring it into, you know, maybe after your planning session, have a half day for doing it. It could be doing code fixes, code reviews. What could be doing something else that the uh, company needs you to do, or an idea that you've got how the company could be better. So I've covered why managers might want agile. What agile is in my mind. If you look at the team, how we can align direction. How we can optimise the team and utilise the time. So in summary, prioritise the side what's to be achieved. So what is the goal? What will it take to do that? So what are the steps? So what's your story map? So start from that. How are we going to achieve that? So work backwards. How can we get all of those things done in that time? And make sure you clarify what you're working towards. Make sure the whole team knows what you're doing. And then execute it. And make the most of your time. Celebrate every success. Have regular feedback loops. Reduce the multitasking as much as possible. Capture your waste and take time to innovate. I just love this picture. Um, because when you talk to different people, I feel this can come into play a lot. So any questions? Shall we thank Tisha?